Welcome to the third video in the Dot Cells XL VBA series. Hopefully you're beginning to feel the power of this technique, but so far we've only looked at selecting single cells. Dot cells can do much more than that. We can select whole ranges of cells using dynamic techniques. Super powerful. Let's get back into the spreadsheet file. Moving on to the third sheet in the file now, which is called Select Range. Now we're wanting to use dot cells to select a range of cells not just a single cell. In this case, we want to select all of the highlighted cells. So how are we gonna go about doing that? Let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor. Let's create a new routine this time. So we're doing something a bit different and let's say range under, underscore select because we're looking to select a range of cells here. Now, the syntax is significantly more difficult, so we have to be very careful, steady, systematic when we're putting this one together. But the basic concept is here. If we look in cell B4, the text, the basic concept is here. We're going to say range, telling Excel we're looking to reference a range and then use cells twice. The first cell's reference is going to be the top left-hand corner. The second cell's reference is going to be the bottom right-hand corner as you look at it and then that's gonna allow us to define a range. This is how it should work. This syntax looks quite complicated. Whenever I'm dealing with a complicated syntax, I just simplify it. Write something simpler first, make sure it's working, then we can build it up. So what's simpler? Well, let's just use normal cell references to refer to this range. So range B8 to E11, I think it is. Let's just use simple references. B8 colon E11 dot select. Okay, there it is. So I'm just going to play this code, hit the play button, simple references. This is working fine. So this is our starting point. Now we're going to substitute in the more difficult concepts, gradually building it up. We want cells twice in here. You've got to pay attention to the number of brackets here. Now I'm just going to put ones in, number ones, and that's not exactly what we want but it should work and just by watching it work and watching what happens we can tweak it to get it doing exactly what we need it to do so i'm going to try playing this code you can save the file Control s f5 on the windows pc uh, to play the code we can see we've selected cell a1 that's because we know we haven't specified an anchor cell so excel is going to work from a1 and it said cells one one so the first row the first column effectively selected that cell twice that's why we only have a1 selected here so let's play with it let's tweak it let's try to understand what what hap what happens with some different values here so i'm going to put two two in the second dot cells there what happens now f5 key on the windows pc run the code i can see we now have a1 to b2 selected and we can continue so what if we put a three in here hit the play button at the top, and then we can see we've got another cell selected. The row height is very small there, but there is another row selected there. So this play, I keep demonstrating, keep demonstrating it because it's critically important. Change the values, what happens? Change the values, what happens? Play with it. This is the best way to build your understanding. But we still haven't finished this task yet because we're looking to select this highlighted range. So how many rows do we need to go down? We know that the first component is going to be rows. So the first component in the first dot cells in this quite complicated piece of syntax, we want eight and then how many columns across? Two columns across. And then what about this last cell? So cell E11, how many rows down? It's 11 rows down. How many columns across? Well, E is the fifth letter in the alphabet, so it must be five columns across. So again, play the code. I'm just going to hit the play button at the top. We've managed to select our range there. So already, hopefully, anyway, you're f I'm getting excited about it. Hopefully you're feeling the power of the dot cells technique. But why is this such a profound thing, in my view anyway? I mean, just putting numbers in is, you know, kind of fun, changing the numbers and seeing what's going on. In reality, having hard-coded values in Excel VBA is not super useful. But as we saw in the previous video, the second video, these don't have to be hard-coded values. These could be cell references, and those cells could contain formulae, maybe counting formulae to count a range. 
then you've got the super powerful, powerful construct as I ended the last video, the super powerful construct of worksheet formulae working together with Excel VBA to create these super powerful mechanisms. I'll see you in the fourth and final video. Thank you.